Good stretching. How are you guys doing today? Welcome back to today's lesson 21, Drawing Loading Zones. This is going to be a fairly easy and quicker lesson, but I think it's actually an incredibly useful tool you guys can use. And I want to really break this down into three or four lessons. The reason is, if you're not one who likes to write things out like I am, I like to draw things. This is a fantastic way of actually drawing it on your slides and on your charts and all that kind of stuff to make it easier, more accessible to watch price action develop as you have a loading zone drawn and how I draw them successfully and correctly. The whole point of doing this and drawing these stop losses and price targets is risk management. And again, that's the first part we always talk about is risk management. That's the foundation. It has to be talked about much more in the whole entire social sphere of stock investing and equities. And again, that's the, always going to be the focus. With that comes again the development of your edge. That's going to give you the heads up, the 50% or more chance of winning. And then again, it comes down to risk management to lock in profits. From here on out, whenever you look into stocks, bonds, ETFs, whatever they are, I want you to start thinking in percentage return, not dollar signs. That's never going to work out. I don't want you to be thinking, hey, on this trade, I can make $5,000. No, 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 no. What you're gonna be thinking about from now on with these trading zones and stop losses and price target is only about percentages. Percentage risk versus percentage gained. Risk versus reward, that's it. So today we're gonna start off with talking about how to properly draw a loading zone on TOS, how I do it, how I figure it out, and how I can do the math behind it. Second, we're gonna only be using our supports, resistances, trend lines, volume profile, and patterns. We're not gonna use anything else but those five things. Yes, indicators can be involved, Yes, you can throw those on to show you some extra goodies like you know an eBay bounce, but again, strictly for this lesson, only price action. We're gonna talk about how you can give yourself some room to breathe and let your stock kind of marinate in the loading zone and kind of take its time if it's supposed to, how to identify convergence, how to you know really properly draw these kinds of things, how to be near a horizontal support, a trend line support, you know, all these kinds of things and how to draw these loading zones. All these kinds of great things. So hopefully it's a quicker lesson than the usual, but I think you're gonna find it important. We got about 20 different tickers I want to go through and show you. So with that being said, y'all, let's get into it. So to start off, the loading zone is where I like to put all my money into a stock. Now you have different entry types as we talked about, value or a crossover, those work just fine. You could also scale in, where you put half your money in first and then half your money in later. It gives you more area for risk, and a lot of times are great things. But again, let's just talk about the simple area to perform these things at. That's the loading zone. So to start off, let's find some easy to read plays with no indicators, nothing else, just some good old fashioned TA and see what we can do. Let's check it out. So this is CPA. It's a really nice looking horizontal channel play. Um, let's just try and find a good way of drawing a loading zone for us to identify where we want to buy into to then perform an entry strategy. Let's just deal with what's important, this area right here. So we can see a gorgeous looking support area, support resistance area. Obviously we have some form of a small, you know, a small uptrend here, sure. Let's go with just supports and resistances. We have a clear one right about here, a clear resistance right about here. Again, the whole entire goal is that we have a nice channel, 100% moves from here up, this is 100% move, here down, there up. So see every single time it enters this channel area, almost besides there and there, we have 100% moves, right? We've made a really nice channel. We've gone from support to resistance plenty of times. That's the first fundamental thing we talked about with technical analysis of drawing proper supports, resistances, and proper channels. We have that here. Let's make our resistance orange, as we always do. Looks really good. So we have a great looking spot here to be buying in and playing off of. What we should do is make an area we want to buy into. Just like with our first TA lesson on supports and resistances, we have like a green line, a yellow line, and a red line. Let's do that again. So we can get rid of this. Let's find three or four smaller micro support areas. We have there, we have right about there, you know, from these wicks here, looks really good, and probably right about there. Boom. Right, these are three little micro support areas, right? I think this is really good. Just like before, we have our most risky entry here. We have our second most risky but less risky entry here. And our best value about here for this kind of play. Sure, it can get lower, but again, this is probably what we're looking at here. Instead of having three color lines on the screen, it can be very confusing. I use the rectangle tool to put a box and show me the whole entire zone itself, just like this. So you can have these three lines if you really wanted to, but I think that's a little bit confusing. What I'm gonna do is keep my support. So you have a rectangle tool. You can come from here 
and come down, right? But I think what's a better thing to do is come up just a little bit, get some extra room, and then come down to where you drew those lines. Be right about here. And there you have it. So now we have an area to play with. What do we do now? What's gonna be great is that now we have an area to buy into. We have a bunch of area to work with. You don't have a line, you have multiple days to check it out, it looks really good. So I'm gonna make mine yellow, just like when you have a stoplight, greens go, yellow is weight, caution, and then red's a stop loss. So our price target will be green, our stop loss will be red, loading zone's gonna be yellow. So as we can see, we can have an actual area of support now, get rid of this. You can just add a support line here and one here if you wanted to. But now we can clearly see anytime we get into this channel, right, of 100% moves from here and up, right, when we get to this area, we have a good chance of wanting to load in. Once again, once you're in that loading zone, you can then determine value, crossover, scaling in, whatever your entry strategy may be, you can go from there only once you hit the loading zone. Looks pretty good to me, right? Well, we actually called this, I think CPA looked pretty good loading zone and now we can see it's clearly starting to make a move back up even on a red day like today was it's making a good move up it's a really easy thing to draw it makes it a lot easier let's do another one so this is p-a-a-s this is very easy to read but clearly when it comes into value up here not so much but down here very much so once again let's just make some supports and resistances we have a bottoming out right about there our second support be right about here our third one clearly right there with these two right there on our fourth one, right about, you can go with there if you wanted to. I'd probably go with right about here. So we have four easy looking support and resistance areas. I wouldn't buy PAAS up here, so let's get rid of that one. But again, you can buy into PAAS here if you wanted to. You could buy in probably here if you wanted to. And you probably buy in here with very little risk, right? So we have three levels of risk management here. Once again, easy horizontal play. Of course, you should throw on trend lines and that kind of stuff, but just with supports alone, you can make this successful. So we have a clear area down here that looks really good to buy into. Let's just zoom over just a little bit, right? Come on over. We can see plenty of hits in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rectangle tool, make a square just like this. That's my channel I wanna play off of. Make this yellow, just like that. Delete this one, that's fine. Delete that one, that's fine. Make this white again, totally good with me. Just like a traditional support. And there you have it. So it's very easy, right? We just make those three levels or four levels where you wanna do levels of support to make it work just fine. This works very well with horizontal plays. As you can see with trend lines, it gets a bit trickier. But once again, if you were to set a line here, just like this, boop, you can do that if you wanted to. Right click it, we're gonna just do a sign alert, but create alert with a drawing. Price crosses below, hit create. And I'm sure after hours it may not go off, but when it comes down here below this line, you'll be first to know that's your alert to go in. And now we have a nice loading zone ready to go for PAAS. Super simple, and again, better than having no alerts, but now we have drawn on the screen a part of our trading plan to manage risk. Again, that's three or four, the whole entire walls of the structure all by this picture by itself. Let's do a few more. FSM is equally as easy to do. Again, very quickly, all you have to do is find your supports. You have one here, one there, about there, and probably right about here. So again, some really nice looking spots to buy into. The top is too high for me personally. I would probably buy anywhere in here. Come on over, draw a nice box, just like that, looks really good. FSM, this would be my loading zone for sure. Get rid of the middle one, all right? This is probably gonna be our first resistance, I assume, somewhere in here. Um, so I'm gonna take this one, draw an orange. Looks really good. Create a drawing, price gets beneath that, I wanna know. So now we have clear support, clear loading zone, looks really, really good. Of course, the whole entire macro thing's a descending triangle, not perfect, right? But again, for a support play, right here, our loading zone's ready to go. Let's do two more. So this is ARC once again. We actually don't have the action near it, so let's do like we're planning a whole move. We have supports here. We have some more support right around this area. So I'm here. Let's just do three lines. Of course, looks really good. I would be comfortable buying ARC at 198 to 190. Anyone anywhere in this wicked area looks good to me. Get rid of this one then. I don't want to even deal with that. This is where I want to be buying into. Let's make our rectangle. 
just like this. I'm going to go a little bit over, okay? See how I have this break down here? I'm willing to buy in a little bit, a little bit under. That's okay. Make it yellow. That's what I do. But just like that. So now when the price comes down, I'm going to have this ready to go. Great alert. Ready to go with this play ready to go. Looks good. Let's do one more. ACCO. We played this before on my channel. It's a really great play. Here and over, a beautiful horizontal play. Now again, you have some super lows down here. I'm not going to consider this uh, part of the play right now, but the bodies of the wicks, the bodies of the moves, I will. Support there, support there, some supports right about here, and then one more right about there is our first resistance area. Sure. You can see it's actually, let's move this up. We have this gap here. That's going to be a nice resistance area, right? Looks really good. Um, I'll make this orange because this is going to be a resistance off the bat. Great support area. I'd be willing to buy ACCO anywhere, anywhere in this area. This to me is a fair price for ACCO given the price action. As we can see, it's moving up after hours. We're not going to touch it. But again, just off a horizontal box, it comes down this area. I'll be in high alert to buy in. It's as simple as that with horizontal plays. Now, it's not that simple with all the things that are on the screen, which we'll get into right now. But again, as a premise and as a theory, you're taking your trading plan, which you can write out, and you're putting it on screen. You're saying, hey, a good value for ACCO is $8 to $9, nothing more. If it breaks all that, we have a stop loss zone we'll be drawing later. It's as simple as that, but it's a great tool to have and a great way to have a trading plan drawn on screen. Let's do some more. So now that you have the idea of how to draw them, let's throw in trend lines to make it a bit more complicated, but again, it helps you show convergence and how to do this properly. Let's check it out. This is Apple AAPL, very well-known stock. Let's go with the price action where we feel comfortable buying in with the newer price action. I think a clear support is right about here. Look at that. Support, bounce, bounce. Plan of action stopping here, plan of action bouncing off this area. Looks great to me. The next support's probably right about here. Looks good to me. And then one more support probably right about there. Right, some really good looking supports. That's really great to me. Let's keep them on for now as we draw our trend line. Go all the way at the bottom, come right. Super easy, come on up. Boop, first hits right there. Looks really good. Make it golden as always. I like to do that. I like to do duplicate and come on up. You can redraw the channel, I like to do duplicate come up here, make this one dotted. Where you want to do, you can do a channel as well. There's our trend line, BEA beautiful. We could also see Apple has a downward trend just like this. Make a resistance trend line as always, just to be clear and concise. So now we're ready to plan, right? I think that buying Apple as of right now at this line is a bit too high. I think if it comes back down to one of these two lines, I would be extremely happy. Where is our convergence spot? Well right in this area. So just like with the convergence conversation we had, you're just gonna draw a box where you'd feel comfortable buying in. Let's look at it. So I'm comfortable buying in anywhere in this area. Let's take our box, just like this. I think paying um, about well, 126, see how these wicks are here? Sure, a lot of action happens here. 126 to about 122, 123. So anywhere in this area. I chose this bottom because of these wicks here, right, these little candles ending here and these candles ending here, right? This is where I wanna be looking at for an entry if AAPL were to pull back, make it yellow, and there we go. So now when Apple pulls back, I did call it over here, um, when Apple does pull back, if it does, it's about 128, 127, 126, I'll start to be on high alert. So now when Apple pulls back, I'll be ready to go. I have my convergence with the trend line and my support, you can use either one when the time comes. It's all ready to go, boom, ready and planned out. Super easy concept when you pair those together to make some very easy and nice moves. Let's check a few more. This is AB. We've used it before, but again, this uptrend is absolutely beautiful. Let's use our supports and resistances. We have a clear one here because our old resistance became a support, and our old resistance here is becoming a support, as we can see. Hopefully, it's bouncing off here more than we'd like to see. That's really, really good. Come from the bottom all the way to the right and come up. First hit, boop, just like that. Gorgeous. Make that golden. Again, let's just redraw the channel like we used to, just like that. Come up to right about here. All this movement right here is being encapsulated. Look at that. All these hits are gorgeous. You can then take another line. You can just take it like this if you want to, then activate it, move it up, or you can duplicate. Come over here. Let's draw our resistance trend line, just like this area. 
Extend right, perfect, perfect. Do all the steps, look at that beautiful price action. And now we have great convergence. Where is it gonna be? Well, most likely here. The bottom support is a fine backup support play, but given convergence, that top one's way, way better. If AB breaks this and comes down here, the trend line's gone, that's absolutely concerning for this kind of play. Get rid of this one, that's gonna be the play. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm actually gonna be planning an entry soon enough, I would be comfortable buying anywhere from about 43.62. I chose this spot because of these wicks and these gaps. See, there's a bunch of gaps here, a bunch of gaps. I'm willing to pay this gap area, right? If it does come back up, I'm fine with that. 43.65 is fine. I'm gonna be perfectly accurate all the time and come down. I would be willing to buy in anywhere to about, you know, 42.50. This right here stands out to me. This right here stands out to me. This wick in this spot right here is a possible support. I'm gonna give it a little bit of room. Again, right about there. Make this bad boy yellow. That's gonna be my spot to buy an AB in the future. As we can see, we're ready to go. So going a little bit above the support and a little bit below the support is just fine. Again, support is an area, not a line. So if you, if you wanna break that as much as you want with risk management of mine, it's totally fine. AB, a little bit above, a little bit below is okay. So again, we have to keep make sure the channel holds, this trend up holds, and the support holds. If this all breaks below 42.39, I'm gonna get out if I choose to buy the top of the line here. It all breaks, I'm just gonna get out. This is my loading zone. I will not be buying lower, I'll not be buying higher. This is where I'm buying, this is my plan. Super easy concept, let's do a few more just to make sure. This is CYTK, a super nice looking uptrend. Supports always come first, we can find one there, looks good. And then some previous resistances right here became some supports. And then some up here would be a resistance, but it's okay, we're not gonna do that. Come down a little bit farther, we can see plenty of support right in this area. Looks good. Let's keep all three while we do our trend line. Bottom, all the way right, come up. We can see right about there is where we hit. Don't love it, let's come for the next spot over. That's pretty low, right about there. Come up, I do like that, yes indeed. Extend right, make this golden. Just like this, looks good. Redraws the channels, totally fine. Get one or two more moves, just like there. Once, twice, three, four, five, we're looking good. Clearly, this support down here is not gonna be useful, get rid of it. We do have two supports, that's totally fine. What can we use? Well, both of them, that's fine with me. There you go, now you have two support areas which you can use and it makes it a lot easier to draw your buying channel. Let's check it out. So we can go to our rectangle tool as always. You can just come here and do a box like this. That's totally fine. I'm gonna go a little bit higher, just a little bit, because I think it's a zone, all right? I see a bunch of wicks right over here. See all these wicks pouncing out. I'm gonna come over, line my cursor up with a lot of them, just a little bit higher, and come down and see a bunch of those wicks just a little bit lower, right about there. See all these wicks down here? I wanna capture all those, right? You can activate it again and scoot it over, make it as big as you want. But right about there is gonna be our golden support area. So I think that you should keep both supports on for this kind of play. See what it's gonna do, right? But if uh, CYTK drops another percent, another 2%, three or four or 5% right into this area, I'm now gonna be in high alert. Again, support, trend line, all you need to be successful with this. Let's check two more. So this is DAL, D-A-L. We can go ahead and find some easy supports really quick. Obviously right there, right where it's bouncing at looks really good. I've been having this for a while. One down here, right about there. Some resistance is becoming support. And for right now, that's about all the important ones. There's one here, but that's pretty low. Doesn't really matter. Come from the bottom all the way up. We can see it does break a little bit. What I've been watching is this gap. Mm -mm -mm. It's a beautiful gap right there. Also from right here and over, is equally as good. So either one of these works fine. I'm gonna go with this spot right here because I have three very, very good hits. Right, once, twice, three, at a fantastic value. Make this golden as always. Again, I, you can also duplicate and move up, that's fine too. I make the second line dotted usually when I duplicate it and then give this an alert, just like that. So now I'm on high alert when it does cross below it. We have obvious resistance trend line coming down. It's not perfect yet, so we're gonna keep it off. Once again, if I was gonna buy into Dell, 
I want to get as much action as possible with the, with being in control, not being too risky. I'm going to go right about here. <clears throat> the reason is these wicks at the bottom and then this top right here. This is plenty of support area. Come down a little bit lower, all your supports. I'm going to grab that last wick. I want to grab this wick right here. Right, Maybe it comes down a little bit lower than I want. Boop, right about, right about there. That's my loading zone. This is the only place I'm willing to buy DAL at. Drawn up, ready to go. It comes down in this area, this trend line area, about $44, whatever it may be, I'll play off of that. Now if it does break this trend, of course you can do a support play, delete it for now because the play is gonna be off convergence. Support, trend line right here. We have our zone drawn anywhere in here, percent to about here, I'd be willing to buy into. Lower, you know, a little bit risky, but in this area for sure, I'm willing to buy in. Let's do one more. This is DKS, Dick Sporting Goods. It's a rarity, you see such a great trend line, but let's just do the supports as always, it's good practice. We have a clear resistance area here becoming a support. This right here could be one, but the price action is above it, so get rid of it for now. And we have a clear support area right about here. Right, that looks good. Let's come down to where it'd be viable, bottom of our move, all the way up. Our first hit is right about there, right about there. It perfectly lines up. Again, that's a real real rarity in the business, but that's a fantastic trend line up. Just like that, again, we can just do redraw the channel for now. It doesn't gonna be that big because you have so many good hits, but right there is our spot to be. Obviously, the support's gonna be worthless, right? Our main support's this one. Let's keep it there. Our convergence is gonna to be top of this channel, this channel up, and the support line. So again, I'm gonna go from probably where these wicks are, you know, right about there. Come down a little bit extra room. Okay, maybe we're right about there. Because I see these wicks here. See these wicks? Wick, body, wick, wick, wick. This line right here. That's a little bit extra. That's where I want to get my support zone at. Make this yellow, just like that. With support and resistance alone, I'd be willing to buy this at $91.50 or $88. Anywhere in this area Dix drops into, I'm ready to go. Plans ready, boom, drawn on. So this works well with just that, but again, let's bring some more things into it. I want to look at 10 more tickers just to make sure it's clear to you. Because if you can't perfect entries and exits, this is going to be a really hard business for you. And making a trading plan is insurmountable with risk management. Having a proper trading zone, price target, and stop loss written out and drawn out makes it so much easier. Let's turn on volume profile alone and check out volume profile can help this process. So this is CTSO. Let's just turn volume profile really quick. It's a really nice horizontal channel kind of play. We turn it on, what's the first thing we see? A big volume node. Again, if you're confused about this, this would be a great time to rewatch the volume profile video, but let's rehash what we're looking at. We remember that this capital D right here is what we see in most of our stocks. This mound shape is where we're gonna see most of our action right looks really good off the bat we can again draw our supports and resistances we have a support there support there and support there we also have one here see this little node right there that could also work as well because the volume around it is so low that works just fine to me again with those drawn on by itself it's always a perfect encapsulation of the stock right the way supports and resistances are that's beautiful nonetheless what's important for this kind of play is our 70 percent volume line here do you see how we're below it just like this we're right below it right here we always draw it like this usually right we can make a new channel but what's important is down here you see how we're below it what happens every single time we break this line well we come back and it's a great value so just having the volume profile on with the shape of that mound or that d being below that area again shows great value also who's liable to buy down here bulls or people trying to short it the obvious answer is bulls, right? So we have an obvious D shape. When we're at the bottom of a D shape, a capital D, a lot of bulls are down here. Most likely until about this spot right here in the middle, a lot of this action over here is going to be bulls buying in, right? We can see clearly bulls buying in, bulls, 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 bulls. Every time we get to this dotted line by the volume profile, we have a lot of bullish action. But just having this line alone, you can take your volume profile and say, hey, anywhere from here to about the bottom of the volume profile is a fine deal. Now, of course, you'd want to throw in supports and all those kinds of great things. But again, just from the volume profile below this line, and that's a capital D, 
Anywhere below this area is fine for a loading zone. Let's check a few more out. This is EEFT. We can see a nice clear trend line up, right? That's beautiful, looking really good. I could probably come over here and make it a little bit better, just like that, right? Just by throwing that in by itself, looks really good, love it. What you won't see is the volume profile. We turn that on, we're gonna see a glorious capital D here. We're in the middle, so it can go either way, as we've talked about, right? In the middle, you go from bulls below to bears above, but what do we see right here? Well, to me, right there, this is our POC line, right? We have a great POC right here. We can duplicate this. I usually make a channel, but it's fine. Right there's our POC. What's it doing? It's being support. So again, with your trend line that's going up, your major support right here is the POC where most consolidation happens. It's holding us up. So we can see clearly with the volume profile turned on, our convergence spot with this trend line lined up almost perfectly with their POC and what happened? It hit it, ran up almost three and a half percent and now it's starting to show some life. So just with volume profile, the POC can be a mega great support area and again, gives you some great insight. Always keep that turned on for charting. It really helps you with convergence. With that turned on, we can clearly see anywhere near the POC, just like this, anywhere in this area would be a fine buy-in just because it had the POC there and how it's reacting to it. That's a fine spot to buy into. We can get rid of it. And now when the play comes back down, it comes a little bit farther, you know, maybe, because you can see historically, it bounces in this area, right? It bounces, it comes down again about 140, 141, anywhere in here, we can buy back in and have a great play. That was shown by volume profile and the point of control. Let's check a few more. We talked about GBIO before, but again, it's a very beautiful horizontal channel play. We can see a clear support here. Looks really good anywhere in this area. You can go from right about here, right about here, Right about there. Anywhere in this area is really good to buy into. What does volume profile show us? Once again, we can see a nice, large D shape. So we can go anywhere in this area and be confident. Once again, we have our 70% volume line, right? Let's make the whole thing again. Like we always do in the, the lesson, just like that. We can see clearly every single time it's below this line, life and comes back, comes back, comes back comes back. It has a four out of four success right here, right? Throw on the support, just like in this area, we'll take our support line, just like this, probably, you know, right about this area looks good to me, looks good. We can then draw our loading zone anywhere from here down. This is all probably fine to buy into. Anywhere in this zone looks good to me. Let's draw the POC and see what's showing us as well. We know the POC is gravitational, right? And where is it? Well, it's above. We have our POC line here. Again, you can make a channel, but just for uh, expediency, we'll just do that. The POC wants to pull us up, right? So let's zoom out real quick and test some risk first reward. So we can see if we were to buy in here, our risk would be about eight to 9%. It's a lot, but to hit the POC alone is 9%. Just from being here, it's a one-to-one -one kind of move given the volume profile. Sure, you never want to enter a one-to-one -one position that's more along the lines of gambling, but the POC alone is pulling us up 9%. That's a pretty good return, uh, speaking in percent, not in dollar signs. Looks pretty good here. Again, the POC may be a resistance, but it pulling us higher is a great sign. Making 10% fairly easily looks pretty promising here. I would definitely check it out, this kind of play. Let's check one more. So this is GLDD. We have a really nice horizontal setup once again. We have a clear support right about there, as we can see. Turning on volume profile one more time. We can see again, a nice capital D. We can see this gap right here is where the wicks come into and turn around. Looks good to me. We can see again, we have a lot of action coming out, a lot of volume above us. Folks are willing to buy it, as we can see, buying it all the way up here. Folks are willing to buy it, buy it, buy it. We have a lot of room to run up here. The bottom of the capital D here. Who is likely to buy in here? bulls so again the support's very strong anywhere from there to probably right about here the support area right about there as we can see it reverses every time there with that being said we have a nice clear area to put our support zone we also are buying loading zone right about there so we can see the volume profile showed us again clarity and reinforce what we're thinking we come on back boom 
easy loading zone. Every time we see GLDD in this area, I'd be willing to buy it or at least take a look at it. Let's do one more quick one. So this is HCAT. I played it multiple times. What's glorious is this new trend line that's forming. I want to be ready for when a new play happens. We can see right here, looks really gorgeous, looks great. Redraws a channel just like that. Get a bunch of nice moves in there. Looks really, really good. What's beautiful about HCAT is that the resistance trend line, we're going to make sure it's exactly the same. It actually lines up very, very well. Now it's not perfect by any means, but it looks really, really good. So we're going to put that on top, make a resistance trend line. It looks really good. I'm waiting for the price action to come back down to where I want it. Let's turn volume profile. So we can see some great pillars here. What I'm looking for is our supports and resistances. Our POC is going to be one. That's going to be one. So is this. This will be a resistance right here, as we can see. Every high volume node is going to be a resistance. So let me turn that off. So we can see some possible entries. Again, the best spot is going to be down here. If HCAT does make a nosedive, which I doubt it's going to, down to $48 and some change, it's probably going to be our best spot to buy into. But as this play develops, right, if we want to catch any bounces, $53.60 and $51.40 will be my moves. What I'm hoping for is that eventually, this is gonna take some time to kind of move around, and eventually HCAT, this trend line will be up towards $51 and some change, and about a month or two, they'll line up together around this area, and I can buy in. So again, having your supports ready, having your trend line ready is imperative. Lastly, I wanna bring them all together. I wanna to do supports, resistances, trend lines, patterns, volume profile, all those kinds of good things and show you a full loading zone on five more. Again, they may seem super simple. It is fairly simple, but I wanna make sure it's crystal clear to you how I draw these and how these work. Let's check them out. So this is HNRG. Let's start with supports and resistances. As always, this resistance became a support. This resistance is staying as a resistance, hoping to be a support soon. And then we have possibly this area as a support area. Looks fine to me. This one's probably not very useful. These two may be. A great uptrend. Come from down here and come all the way over. It does hit here. I'm gonna cut through just a little bit to get all of these wicks, right? It's not always gonna be perfect, that's okay. Make this golden. Great. Again, duplicate is a fine option. Come up and get some extra moves. Go just a little bit. I want, I want this move and I want this move right here. I want those. That adds a lot to it, and these right here adds a lot of extra hits to it. A great trend line like this. So as we can see off the bat, we're coming into this area. I'm going to keep both on. All right, It's coming into this area. Looks really good. I see no true resistance trend line. Possibly we have one. We'll duplicate this and come up. All right, it's close. It's close. I'm not going to... I'll put the top on it. Sure, we'll keep this up here. It's important to have resistance trend lines as always. So it's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. Make this bad boy orange. Nice, looks good. Let's put on our volume profile. We have our lines down here. They're not going to be super useful. Again, these are not part of the action right now. But again, if it does dip, this line right here may be critical for support. So those are good. Our POC we're going to draw just like this. Make it a channel. Extend left, extend right. Make that into a POC node. I draw it like this. Now it's on there, so it's ready to go for the rest of the time we're watching it. Looks good to me. Boom. Great setup. So let's see if we can find a good convergence spot to put our loading zone. So there's no guarantee H and RG is going to drop all the way down to a perfect spot. But scrolling over, we have a clear area of support and a clear area to buy into. To me, it's the top right here, right about there, to right about here. Right? This is a great spot to be in. It hits this spot, I'm ready to buy into, right? I'm also gonna come down just a little bit extra to right about there. The reason, these two, this wick right there, and these spots in this wick right here. Again, it's not perfect, so I wanna go with that area, make this bad boy yellow, just like that. And so now when HNRG drops, if it does drop any farther into this area, I'm ready to go. One thing to clarify, I don't always mean that the price action hits the actual color box. I just put it to the side there so I have it for some days to watch it. I don't want it actually to hit the box. If it does, it's fine. But again, if you want to do just a line or a little box, it's totally fine. So I don't really, I don't mean 
HNRG does like one of these and comes in the box. If HNRG tomorrow is right here and the price ends, that's perfect. I don't mean like it has to hit this. You can if you wanted to, to draw it like this. If you want to have the action actually come into the zone, that's fine. I don't like having two colors on top of each other because you can see it's readable, but it's not great. So I like to have it off to the side where the price action isn't. And again, it looks nice and clean. Let's check a few more. So this is JNPR, a beautiful uptrend once again. Let's go ahead and draw some supports and resistances. We have a great resistance, this whole area. These three became a support. This resistance right here became a support. And these two have broken. So we're going off of these two right now. Of course, you could always be like, hey, I think this is a resistance. Has it acted as a support yet? Nope, so we're not gonna go with it. It has to at least have survived as support at least once. It did here, it did here, looks good to me. Our trend line is also super easy to see, just like that, glorious and beautiful. So a quick reminder about this, JMPR is a great example. Don't make this more complicated than it has to be. There's 50 piece puzzles and five piece puzzles, and they render you the same exact results, money. This is a five piece puzzle. These descending channels and these descending plays while the market's going up are 50 piece puzzles, trying to find supports, waiting for breakouts, all these kinds of things. They work, but again, for a beginner like you or a novice like you, finding easy plays is the goal. Risk management and consistency is always the goal. Not try to impress anybody, including yourself. Keep it simple, stupid. So a great trend line, let's make it golden. This one just redraws a channel, it's fine. Get some extra hits, you can go from here, that's probably good. You get this wick right there, all these nice plays right here, looking really good. We can see clearly if this trend line breaks, this support's worthless. You can if you want to, keep it on here, like make it dotted, or maybe make it a different color, like maybe make it this in like, I don't know, gray, if you wanted to, that's not rare, it's not what I do. But let's just say you wanna keep it on here in case this all breaks down, and you're waiting to buy in, maybe then you know this is a good support play. But for me, I'm gonna remove it. This is a clear conversion spot. Volume profile, does it show anything? Well, not truly. Um, you can throw all the lines on here if you want to. What I do see is this though, a high volume node. This is what you wanna see. And so we have a very good looking support here. And again, a nice rule of thumb if this all breaks down, most likely it's coming to where? The POC. So this all does break down. We're gonna expect at least to some degree the POC to be the next major support we're gonna see. And so I'm gonna put that on there. I'll put the other two lines on there eventually, but again, this play, they're pretty worthless. So we know we have a high volume node right here and one more right here. So we have a great spot of convergence based off price action from about here to get all these little wikis and all these little candles to probably right about there. Why there, you may ask? All this bottom action, these wicks right here, this wick right here, this gap right about this area is almost included. This whole spot is a great spot to be buying into, in my opinion. Just like that. So now next time we see JNPR dip into this area, another few pennies or so gets into here, we now know our loading zone is ready to go. Let's check out two more. So this is KMI. It's actually one I'm planning to hope to take a position in soon if the sell-off we are seeing stops. Off the bat, let's find some support. So you can see a lot of these have broken. The next clear one is exactly where it's at, probably right about there. I'm gonna go down a little bit lower to where these old resistances were. Again, old resistances become new supports. I trust that mightily. Of course, we can add some extras, but I know those play pretty well. This is where I wanna be buying into. Our trend line from the bottom, all the way right and up, we can see some beautiful, beautiful hits, right? It looks really good to me. You can also see though from here over, we had another trend line that has broken. So again, keep that in mind, but this is a really good spot to be at. We have a nice golden channel. Redraw if you like to. Get some extra hits just like that. Now we have once, twice, three times. Delicious. Clearly, this is a spot you wanna be in. Let's draw the volume profile and see if it adds anything. We can see it doesn't add much to this play. Uh, you could probably see a high volume node right here or right here. What I'm gonna do is throw on a spot this here and that here and zoom back out. Take that off. So now I can see possibly some spots I wanna be at, right? If it does break this support, it's probably coming to here. If it breaks the support, probably coming to here. So for this intensive play, all we have is support and resistance and our trend line, we're gonna go with top of the channel, 
It's right about here. Super simple. The reason I chose the top of this channel, the trend line, is just because it's already in it. So again, if it does make a quick move out, I would expect it to do one of these, right? A quick move out. So I'm gonna go just right above it and just right below it. This is a fine spot to be. I want to make a move on this pretty soon here. I like where it's at. Let's just do one more. So this is MCHP uh, microchip technology. Again, a great looking stock for a trend line and a support play. Clearly we have support right about this area. Looks good. And right about this area. Looks good. Let's check out uh, our trend line. I'm gonna come from over here. Come all the way up, see it's okay. Only one hit. Down here again, only one hit. But towards this area, we have a nice little spot right there. Coming up and we can see, ooh, three or four beautiful hits. So I'm going from right, right there, a little wick, that little pullback, right? That's where I'm gonna go from. We have a nice little action right there. Activate it, make sure it's really nice and precise, right about there. Extend right, make it golden. Redraw the channel, get all those moves just like that. So we can see we're coming right into where we wanna be. This is great, so I think this is worthless. And this one possibly is also worthless. Let's find the next support up. We can see this area right about here is one. Delete that. We're gonna go with this one because of this wick here. This is right here, this resistance spot. So this is a good spot to be at. So we can see our move is gonna be right into this support area and this trend line area. So we're gonna make a nice little box. We're gonna go from right about here. The reason I'm going from here is this wick and this wick. I wanna kinda of get a little bit extra moves just to be a high alert. So probably right about there. Come all the way down. You can stop here if you want to. I'm gonna come down just a bit farther and get a few extra wicks, right about there. Just like with our trend lines, we wanna get a little bit extra moves, right? It's all about zones. That to me is a good zone, a good spot to buy into. It's gonna drop right into this area, 358 or 3.58% lower, right in the spot, we'll be good to go. So again, the whole entire goal is to emphasize areas and zones. I want you to emphasize risk management. I want you to emphasize a trading plan. Again, it's just the loading zone. We're gonna talk about stop loss and price targets next. Throw all three on there. It'll show you a lot more for a drawn on trading plan in its entirety. This is gonna help you finding a great value on a stock and not overpaying and showing you risk first reward. Because if you're above your loading zone, you know not to buy in. And if you break below it, you know it's probably broken the trend and not even get into it in the first place. Unless you can find a support play, but again, that lacks conversion, so we wouldn't touch it in that case. This will also help you when it comes to flirting and kind of getting near a stop loss area. If it comes down into your loading zone and comes down a little bit farther and starts to curl, again, you would then have some options of entry strategies. You have value, a crossover. Maybe you're gonna have a really good scaling in opportunity. They're all right there for you. It starts with the loading zone. This is also really gonna help you picture support as an area. Instead of having five or six lines, just draw a nice rectangular box on there and you're good to go. It's super easy, super convenient, and instead of writing out a trading plan, you can just have some squares on the screen that does just the same thing. So what we talk about today, again, the loading zone is based off supports, resistances, trend lines, patterns, and the volume profile. It's all price action. Of course, you can throw on EMA lines to throw some extra good stuff in there, RSI, crossovers, whatever it may be, it can be thrown on there with indicators. But again, just from price action alone, it's entirely possible to have a whole loading zone, stop loss, and price target. Again, we'll talk about the other two in a minute, but the, but the loading zone can be done with just price action. It also helps you picture an area of convergence as a trend line, as a support, volume profile, 200 email line, all come in the same spot. You can highlight that area, give yourself some room to breathe. It's not gonna be just a precise line. You have five, ten dollars, five, ten cents, two, three percent, whatever it is. Give yourself some room to breathe and to have some time to decide. The best part about swing trading, and again, this can be applied to scalping or day trading too, but for me personally with swing trading, it gives you a day, two or three most times, to breathe and analyze. It hits the top of your loading zone, you don't gotta rush in, right? There's no point in rushing in. If it's already coming down, give it a day or two. You can then go to your fundamental analysis, double check your mental analysis is good, get your trading plan written out, and again, it starts with the loading zone. It hits your alerts, it hits your loading zone, that's your key signal to then start the process of making a trading plan based off risk management and to keep yourself consistent. 
We showed you how easy it is to draw one with just a support play. We then threw in trend lines. We then threw in their buy and profile. And again, it all builds up to convergence. Highlight that convergence spot for buying. You'll be much more successful. So there you guys have it. With that being said, that's lesson 21. Next is how to properly draw a price target. So again, this is gonna be a great step for you from going from loading to price target and how you hold a runner, all those kinds of great things. Of course, they're not all gonna be winners. You'll have some losers too. And we're gonna draw a stop loss and lesson 23. With that being said, y'all, let's get over to lesson 22, how to draw a price target. Let's go.